All right, we are back due to popular demand. Um, not really. All right, uh, so we're going to talk about two different concepts today. Both of them are connected into the reading that you're reading this week. Um, so we're talking a lot about urban geography, and specifically now we're going to go from the concept of megacities and international cities more toward talking about um, the structure of cities themselves and why they function the way they do. So we're going to learn about two concepts or models um, that explain a lot about the structure of cities. One is rooted a little bit more in geography and economics. The other is rooted more in uh, American history. So they both have a role to play in explaining why cities look the way that they do, though. Um, so the first one we're going to spend a little bit of time on, I think it's going to correspond with question number three um, in your guide, and that is the bid rent curve. And the other one is called Borchardt's Epics Epochs of Transportation Systems. Uh, so bid rent curve, um, also called peak land value intersection. Uh, let me show you the model and then we'll actually read about it. Is basically um, a fairly common sense, um, I think, uh, concept that within cities, um, the economic value of land within the central business district and closest to the central business district is going to be higher um, than on the outskirts. And you can see there's sort of a relationship between the distance from the central business district and um, and land value um, and the kind of the value of land. Uh, so in essence, if you're going to summarize this in one sentence, you would say basically the further you get from the central business district, um, the lower the land costs. So like all models, this is not perfect and does not work out 100% of the time. Um, but does explain a pretty good amount. And, and really, you can sort of filter that on to thinking about cities themselves and where skyscrapers are and where specialty shops that have really high thresholds and high ranges uh, and sports stadiums frequently, um, where they might be, right, within in and around the central business district. Although there is a little bit of a uh, movement to move sports stadiums outside of the city. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about this. So we see the three lines here. Um, and like we said before, this is representing distance from the CBD and then the rent for land that a service is willing to pay or an industry is willing to pay. Uh, so this explains basically why within some central business districts, you're more likely to see things like specialty shops um, kind of in and around the central business district. Oftentimes you have kind of an industrial ring around the CBD. Um, so if you think about it in the context of Seattle, you can kind of picture where the central business district is within Seattle. And then you have sort of the ring of industry that might be around it, or maybe not around it, but located on the periphery of the central business district. And then the further, the further you radiate from the central business district, the more you might be able to uh, to have residential areas. Um, so obviously we have some residential areas within the CBD. Um, oftentimes they are more likely to be what we see here, apartments. Uh, so you're more likely, because the land value is so high, um, you're more likely to see apartments there rather than single family homes. So thinking about this, um, and we're not going to do a ton with this model, but um, I do want to at least mention it because it goes with some models that we'll talk about later. Um, is um, thinking about how this model applies. So thinking about most big cities, uh, most big cities today still have a central business district. Depending on the city, that still might be the highest kind of value land within the city. I think a city like Seattle, you would probably say, yeah, it, um, it probably is. Um, but there are other cities where the central business district is actually um, no longer kind of the, the cultural and economic center of the city. Um, so thinking about cities I've been to, Cincinnati stands out to me as one, uh, where the CBD is is maybe secondary to some of the higher end suburbs that have sort of spread it around, spread it up around the city. So um, that is the bid rent curve. Um, and that's going to apply as we think about kind of how cities are designed or how cities kind of the model and the structure of cities. Um, and we'll do more of that next week. Okay. Um, all right. Thanks. Bye.